Hello, I'm Neil Kelly, Orange County's Registrar of Voters. I'd like to welcome you to the exciting world of elections. Whether you're a longtime volunteer or this is your first experience, we're glad you're with us. It's sometimes hard to imagine that we've made so many improvements to our operations based on your feedback. Today, with your help, we are leading the nation in election administration, providing innovative services to our voters as well as enhanced training and support to our poll workers. In fact, we continue to improve and have redesigned our training program so that all material is practical and relevant, ensuring that you feel ready for election day. This video is designed to serve as a supplement to your in-class training and your polling place handbook, and serves as an excellent resource so that you can do more than just learn, because when our poll workers are strong, our voters can feel it. It really comes down to this. We've always asked three basic things of our poll workers. Be prepared, treat voters with respect, and have a positive attitude. Voters entrust the democratic process to us, and for me, that's both a personal responsibility and a high honor. I consider the hundreds of employees and thousands of volunteers that contribute to the success of each election to be our greatest assets. You truly are making a difference in your community. Thank you for joining us on this journey. I've been a clerk for many years with the Registrar of Voters, and I'm ready for this year's election. As I prepare for the big day, one of the first things to do is to have a phone call with one of the members from the ROV staff. Registrar of Voters, this is Tricia. Hi, this is Victoria Alvarez, and I wanted to volunteer for this year's election. Wonderful. I've seen that you served as a clerk for several elections and was wondering if you'd be interested in being promoted as an inspector. Wow, that sounds like a great opportunity. I'm sure you're going to do a great job. Thank you so much. I'm ready. Have a great day. Bye. I'm going to log into my poll worker pass account. It'll access information such as where to pick up my supplies and who my poll workers will be. I'm glad to see that I'll be working with Jack again. He's worked on a lot of elections. I also see that I'll be working with a new clerk, Patty. She can learn a lot from him. As soon as I find my poll workers, I'll call them to give them all the details. Hello, Jack. It's Victoria. I'm glad that we'll be working together again. I'm the inspector this year. Um, it looks like there's only three of us, but we should be able to handle it. And don't forget to bring a lunch, and I'll see you bright and early at 6 a.m. I need to make an appointment for my supply pickup. I could call, but doing it online is much easier. And the last thing I need to do is to set a reminder on my calendar to call the polling place about a week before the election to see if set up the day before is possible. Hi, good morning. Good morning. May I see your poll worker pass? Sure. That? One three zero oh, zero oh, seven. One three zero oh, zero oh, seven. All right, and that's for you. And if you could just pop your trunk for us, awesome. All right, thank you. And this is your inspector envelope. Okay. If I could get your signature right there, sure. it's just to say that you're the one that's picking everything up. Perfect. And you're actually going to be keeping this. So everything you're going to need for election day is going to be in here. So keep this, keep your poll worker pass card with you. And just thank you so much for coming to early pickup. You're all ready to go and have a great election day. Thank you. Now that I've picked up my supply box, I need to review the contents and verify the precinct numbers. Hi. 
Every box will come with a phone. I need to make sure that this is fully charged on election morning. This is the way the registrar of voters can contact me. It's a week before the election. I need to call the polling place to see if set up the day before is possible. If not, I know my team and I can handle it on election morning. Hi, this is Victoria. I'm the inspector at your polling place. I was wondering if set up the day before would be possible. Okay, so we can't get in early. That's not a problem. We will be there then at 6 a.m. on election morning. Thanks so much. It's the morning of the big day. I have to verify I have everything I need before I leave. The supply box, the electrical bag, the JBC, and this cell phone, which I already charged and turned on this morning. Oh, and don't forget your coffee. Hi, Patty. Hi, Victoria. Hi. I'm at the location, but I don't see anybody. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure you're on the side of the building. If you come around to the left, I'm sure you'll find us. OK, great. we Will do. Thanks. Bye. Be sure to find your team so that they can help out. If you don't have access by 6, 10 AM, call the help desk. Recall what you learned in training when looking for location. The voters need to be able to see the table from the entrance, and the poll workers need to be able to see the voting booths from the table. You know, this looks like a good spot. That I way the foot traffic will not interfere with the voters as they vote. Sounds good. Why don't we start set up right about there? Right there? Okay, great. Okay, we need to set up the table first so that we can process the paper ballots right at 7 a.m., just in case we have any issues with the voting system. And Jack, let's prearrange the e-booths first before setup. That way we can see if the flow makes sense. We have to make sure that we arrange all the e-booths so we can see them from the table. In training, they emphasize to make sure the handles are facing towards the wall and the legs are facing up. That sounds great. Let's get started. And Patty, the caddy combination code is right there. I'll place a Dow unit at the end. Okay, great. Put this one right here. Now that we are done prearranging the e-booths, I like to have one clerk set up the cardboard booths and the display stand, while I work with the clerk to set up the official table. I'll use the poll worker handbook for my setup steps. Thank you for taking out the orange canvas bag. Let's finish setup. We need the voter roster. The street index. There should be three for each precinct. Check, check, and check. Great. Alpha list. Check. Name badges and pins. Actually, we've already received our name badges from our poll worker pass. You're right. Let's get our pins on. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, and Jack. Thank you. You know, now we should probably remove everything from the supply box. Be sure to remove all of the items from the middle of the tray, the masking tape, a roll of I Voted stickers, and a package of ballot cards, and place them on the table. You will need the masking tape to put up the signs later. Put the tray and orange canvas bag neatly under the table with the voted ballot container. 
The voter registration forms go on top of the orange canvas bag. Lastly, place the empty supply box behind the table. This is what your official table should look like. Is it all right if we set up the display stand right here? Oh, that's a great spot. Look inside the inspector envelope for the ADA instructions and have one poll worker follow the steps. Instruct one poll worker to mark the street indexes. Place two of them outside, one marked, one unmarked. We're almost ready to set up the e-booths, but we need to complete the oath of office and review the disability sensitivity page in the handbook. You can find the oath of office on the second page of the voter roster. Here's how to set up the e-booths. First, undo the Velcro. Then press the left button. Pull up the left leg and pull it out until the arrows meet. Repeat on the right side. Now lock the back brace. Now extend the legs on the other side. Attach the four leg extensions. Now take both foot pieces and extend them until they lock into place. Put the foot pieces onto the legs and make sure the extended part points toward the handle. Now, to stand the e-booth up, one pull worker stands on the hinge side and pulls the black foot tubes down to the ground. Then, two pull workers grab the top of the legs and lift the e-booth. Once they move the e-booth into position, they will repeat this process for each e-booth. Once all the e-booths have been set up, verify all the blue seals and record on the chain of custody. Now unlatch and open the lids, and remember to lock the lids for safety. Next, one worker will check all the power cord connections, and another should grab the power strip from the electrical bag and plug the power cords into the power strip. Okay, now we connect the gray data cables. Starting with the e-booth closest to the table, connect the gray data cable to the next e-booth. Remember to tighten all the screws. Plug in the power strip to the wall and turn on the power strip. Verify four red and one blue security seals. Put the blue seal on the back of the chain of custody. Sign the chain of custody. Plug the red end of the gray data cable into the red JBC port. Now connect the gray data cable to the first e-slate. Plug the black power cord into the JBC and then plug into a wall outlet. Wait until everything powers up. Then plug in the battery key and twist the collar to tighten. Then confirm response test screen is on all e-slates. Have your poll workers press enter on each e-slate starting with the one closest to the official table. This one looks different. It says EB103. Hmm, that's strange. Should we call the help desk? No, let's not call the help desk right away. Why don't we check the what to do if section of the handbook first? Okay. It's always wise to check the what to do if part of the handbook if any issues come up. This will be an easier and more efficient way to solve a problem before contacting the help desk. This happens a lot. The power cord was not plugged into the adapter properly. Now that we've solved the power issue, we need to reboot the JBC. 
That just means unplugging the black power cable and battery key. Count to 10 and plug them back in. Now we're back to where we left off. Confirm response test screen is on all e-slates and make sure to press enter on each e-slate again. We're good to go. Press done on the JVC. Press next on the JVC. Press print zero tape on the JVC and leave it attached. While zero tape is printing, unfold and set up the privacy screens according to the attached instructions and verify e-slate flaps are closed. Wow, we're almost done. Thank you so much. You guys did a great job. Now we'll have Jack and Patty complete the outdoor duties, including putting up the signs, as instructed in the handbook. These are the final steps before we start our day. The plastic and paper vote signs show the way to the location. The plastic vote signs are intended for street corners or parking lot entrances and must be visible from the street. Paper vote signs are intended to lead the voter from the car to the voting room. Use masking tape to post paper vote signs along the voter path. Make sure the 100 foot sign is 100 feet or about 33 steps from the voting room door. Ensure the accessible path signs points the voter to an accessible path of travel to the voting room. And the voter bill of rights should be right outside the door. Can I vote? Well, the polls don't open until 7 a.m. You're welcome to wait online until we officially open. Okay, thank you. Always hang the flag against the door or wall, never in a window or upside down. Up next, I'll have to do the final JBC setup. Press open polls button on JBC. Find the JBC envelope under the JBC. Find the polls open password on the JBC envelope. Enter the polls open password. Press accept and wait 30 seconds to check the home screen on all eSlate. The JBC says it's 7 a.m. It's official, guys. Would you mind going outside and making the official announcement? Sure thing. Thanks, Jack. Okay, we should get a rush of voters coming. Ready. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. The polls are now open. First voter of the day, remember the steps for the first voter. The poll worker and first voter check that the supply box is empty. Get two pieces of white sealing tape from the tray and place tape on both sides of the supply box while the first voter observes. Tear the zero tape off of JVC and ask the first voter verify that the zero tape contains all zeros. The first voter and the inspector will sign the bottom of the zero tape. Place the zero tape in the JBC envelope. And that completes our steps for the first voter. Now we move on to processing the voter. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Can I get your name, please? Sure, it's Moses Rodriguez. Okay. Ask for the voter's name and search for the name in the voter roster. Once you find the name, repeat the name audibly. Moses Rodriguez? Yes. Okay. Can I have you sign here, please? Okay. Say to the voter, please sign your name and write your address on the line. Write the cross-reference number and precinct number on the voter's ballot card. If it's a primary election, write the voter's party, too. All this information can be found in the voter roster.
give the ballot card to the next poll worker at the table, the one with the street index. The street index poll worker looks up the voter's address using the cross-reference number. The poll worker says to the voter, Can you repeat your address, please? Sure, it's uh, 12 Elm Street. 12 Elm Street. Okay, did you want to vote electronically or by paper? Electronically. Okay. To issue an electronic ballot, press the Add Voter button on the JBC. Use the ballot card to enter the correct precinct ID number and party if applicable. Make sure to issue the correct precinct. Press the print button to print an access code, then draw a line through the ballot card. Give the voter the access code, ballot card, and an I voted sticker. Then direct them to an open electronic voting booth. Okay, please remember that booths are not touch screen. When you see the waving American flag, you'll be done voting. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Here's how to process a standard paper ballot voter. Did you want to vote electronically or by paper? Paper, please. Okay. To issue a paper ballot, use the precinct number on the ballot card to find the correct precinct ballot from the stack of paper ballots. Make sure to issue the correct precinct. Double check to make sure that you have given the voter the correct number of pages. The voting booths are to your right. When you've completed your ballot, please return to the table with your ballot inside the secrecy folder. Thank you. Thank you. Put the ballot in a secrecy folder and give it to the voter. Hi. When a voter returns a paper ballot, a poll worker then takes a secrecy envelope and drops the paper ballot into the ballot box as shown. Don't forget to give the voter an I voted sticker. If any voter needs language assistance, direct them to a clerk who may be able to help them or show them the ballots in their language. Oh, dạ xin chào, tôi cần sự giúp đỡ bỏ phiếu. Uh, tôi nói tiếng Việt. Chào chị, em biết nói tiếng Việt. Chị cho em biết tên được không? Uh, Tammy Lê ở trên trên đường 12, đường Bosphorton. Okay, Jay. While processing voters, remember to update the outside street index with the table street index throughout the day, every hour until 6 p.m. There you go. Thank you. Jack, it's 9.30 a.m. and since there's a slowdown, why don't we check the chain of custody of the East Lates and the GBC? Cool. Thank you. Check the e-booths and JBC mid-morning and afternoon by removing the e-booth chain of custody from the plastic sleeve in the caddy and the JBC chain of custody from the JBC envelope. Done. Don't forget we need to do this again in the afternoon and when we close. Hello, my name is Sam Wesson. I'd like to vote. Okay, just one second. Hey, Patty, I can't find this voter's name on the roster. Uh, this is where I was told to come and vote. Oh, that's not a problem. We want to make sure that you vote. Did you check the supplemental? I sure did. Okay. And did you want to vote electronically or by paper? Electronic, please. Sure. So if I could have you fill out the red parts right here and return it back to me, that'd be great. You can step over there. Thank you. Thank you. Issue a provisional ballot under the following five circumstances. One, the voter's name is not in the roster. Two, the voter's name is marked with vote by mail, but the voter did not bring their vote by mail ballot to surrender. Three, the voter's name or address is different than what is listed in the roster and the street index. Four, the voter's name is marked with proof of residence and they are unable to provide proof of residence. Five, the voter requests a different party ballot than what is listed in the roster. Hi. There you are. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't see very well. Is there an audio ballot I can use? There sure is right this way. Oh, thank you. And you're going to just put on those headphones and you'll be all set. Okay. Thank you. Your role as a poll worker is to provide a positive voter experience. If you notice a voter has a disability, remember to address the voter as a person rather than the disability. You can always refer to the disability sensitivity information located in the appendix of the poll worker handbook. 
please remember that the e-boosts are not touchscreen. And when you see the waving American flag, you'll be done. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, hmm. would you mind taking the alpha list and going up to the voters in line to see if there's just some voters wanting to drop off a ballot? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'll help out while you do that. Great. Good morning. Are you here to drop off your vote by mail ballot? No, I'm not. Okay, can I get your name? Jeff Coleman. Jeff Coleman. Using the alpha list in the voter line allows you to identify oh, voters who are dropping off their vote by mail ballots and many provisional voters. In a primary, you can also obtain the voter's party preference. Thank you. Oh, uh, you have a vote by mail? Just go ahead and step to the table and she'll be able to help you. Good morning. Morning. Can I get your name? Maria Pinner. Maria Pinner, okay. You know, I don't see your name on our roster, but we want to make sure that you're able to vote today. Victoria, she's going to be a provisional. If, just step right over there and she'll be able to help you out. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. And your name? Sir, do you mind removing the button? There's no electioneering allowed. Oh, uh, but I love this button. Isn't it my right? I understand. But the law requires that no electioneering take place within 100 feet of the polling place. It includes t-shirts and buttons for or against measures or candidates. Oh, man. Why'd they make that law anyway? It's to protect the voters so that they can cast a secret ballot without intimidation. Well, thanks for the explanation. I'll, I'll take it off. Thank you for understanding. Electioneering is when people show how they feel about a political candidate or measure. An example would be a campaign button or t-shirt. It's 8 p.m. The polls are now closed. Jack, would you mind going outside standing at the end of the line and announcing the polls are closed? Sure. Great. The polls are now closed. Don't worry, you'll still have an opportunity to cast your vote. The polls are now closed. However, those of you in line can still complete your vote. I'm sorry, sir, but the polls are now closed. Really? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Good night. Thanks for voting. Well, that was the last voter. We're almost done. Jack and Patty, would you mind disconnecting the e-slates, breaking down the cardboard voting booths and the display stand? Sure. Sure. If you need any help, it's all in the handbook. Okay. To close the polls, press the Close Polls button on the JBC and press Continue. Enter the polls close password found on the back of the JBC envelope. Press Accept and Print Tally. Then wait until the tally has finished printing. This may take a while for an election with many contests. Once the tally tape has finished printing, press print tally again to print a second copy. Could you both please sign the tally sheets? Have all poll workers sign both copies of the tally tape. Post one tally tape outside of the polling place and put the other one in the voter roster. You'll be using this one later to record the number of ballots cast on the roster cover. Disconnect power, battery key, and the gray data cable from the JBC. While the inspector is working on the JBC, the clerks begin to take down the cardboard booths and display stand. Next, have your workers close the e-slates by disconnecting all the power and data cables and packing them appropriately. Next, get the e-booth chain of custody from the caddy and verify the blue printer seals are present. Then begin removing the e-slate printers from the e-booths. Press the black button and twist as shown to release the printer. While twisting, pull firmly on the printer to remove it from the booth. Gently release black cables from the white clips on the back of the printer and disconnect the cables. Verify the red seal is present. 
sign the chain of custody and return it to the sleeve on the caddy. This needs to be done for all of the e-booths. Place all printers in the blue bag as shown and place the bag near the table. Now that we have closed the JBC and the e slates, I will start working with another poll worker to organize, count, and record ballots at the official table. The rest of the clerks can begin to break down the e-booths, take down the outdoor signs, and the flag. Jack, could you take down the e-booths while Patty and I organize the ballots? Sure. Great. When organizing the table, start by separating the materials into three piles. Pile A for extra supplies, Pile B for precinct supplies, and Pile C for tally supplies. Refer to the poll worker handbook for a list of specific items. After organizing the piles, shift your focus to Pile C and begin counting and recording the surrendered vote by mail ballots, the spoiled ballots, and the unused ballots. You will record the number on the used ballot bag in the voter roster. It is important to break down the e-booths safely. After closing the lids and locking the front snaps. Patty, could you take a moment to help me with the e-booths? Sure. Two people will be needed to lower the e-booths to the ground. Remember, it's really important to support the e-booth lid when you are releasing the lock. It's time to unseal the ballot box and separate the contents into four piles. Voted paper ballots, provisional paper ballot envelopes, provisional electronic envelopes, and vote by mail envelopes. Once you have separated the four groups, count and record on the voter roster. The voter paper ballots go on section two and three. The voter provisional paper ballot envelope and the voter provisional electronic envelopes go on section three. And vote by mail envelopes go on section six. After that, use the tally tape that you put in the voter roster to record the total ballots voted in this precinct. Record the number in section 3 of the voter roster. When finished, put the tally tape in the JBC envelope. The poll worker can begin to put away the JBC, the cord, cable, envelope, and chain of custody in the JVC case. While the inspector finishes the ballot reconciliation and signature count, other poll workers will make sure the e-booths are broken down and placed in the caddy correctly. And be sure the workers pack the e-booth so that the legs are facing your left and the handles are facing out, as shown. Have your other poll worker organize the voted ballot container. Please seal the white voted ballot container box. Use the white with the red trim sealing tape and use the guides on the box. Have all the poll workers sign the tape on the voted ballot container. Afterward, poll workers will remove all of the outdoor signs, equipment, and paperwork. That includes the flag, too. Time to get back to counting signatures in the voter roster and record in the appropriate precinct line in Section 4. Now that all numbers have been recorded, you can compare the number of ballots cast with the number of voter signatures in the roster. Add up the numbers in Sections 3 and 4 and record at the bottom of each respective section. Compare these numbers, and if there is a discrepancy, record the possible explanation in the lines provided. Now that you're finished with the numbers, it's time for all of the poll workers to sign Section 5 on the voter roster. Uh, Jack and Patty, did you remember to put the roster in the orange canvas bag? 
sure did. Great. What about the um, collection center map and the receipt for sealed container? Did you get that out of the orange bag? Oops, forgot about that. And how about the white ceiling tape in the trash bag? Got it. Got it out. Great. Thank you for packing the supply box. Great, you guys were almost done. Patty, do you think you could collect the electrical supplies and we'll get the others? Would you help me clean the room? I want to leave it cleaner than it was before. Sure. Thank you. I've got the collection center map and the receipt for sealed container and the cell phone. And I think that should be it. Sure. Don't forget, I'll be following you to the collection center. Right, I'm so glad we decided that earlier. It should only take us about 15 minutes. Okay. Well, that should be the last of it. Thank you both so much. And I couldn't have done it without you. No problem. I'll get the lights in the door. Today was a great election day. The votes are coming in. Stay tuned to hear the results as they happen. Hi, do you need me to get out of the car? No need. You can go ahead and stay inside your car. I know it's been a long day, so we'll try to make this process go as quickly and smoothly as possible. Can I please have the cell phone and receipt for a sealed container? Sure. Yep. Thank you very much. Can you please pop open your trunk for us so we can take out all the supplies? Supply box. Check. JVC box 13007. Check. VV Pat. Check. ADA equipment. Check. Electrical equipment. Check. Okay, you're all set. Here's a copy of your receipt. Okay. Thank you and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Drive safely. The election was a success. It was long and hard, but it was rewarding knowing that I made a difference.